right, we're, we are recording. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We want to welcome everyone watching this program on replay, and thank you for joining us. I'm Steve, the bookman Eisenstein, and this is the Rare Book Cafe, the first and only program on Blab TV in the entire world about antiquarian books. And we want to thank you for joining us on Blab.im. My regular guest today is not here yet, and that's Thorne Donnelly of Liberty Books. And we are live with Alan Smith right now at... Go ahead, Alan, take and it over. We, we are at the Times Reading Festival. It's put on by every year by the uh, St. Petersburg Times and now the Tampa Bay Times. And it is a, um, it is a great reading festival with, uh, with lots of authors who are presenting their books. Uh, thank you for the Twitter mention. Oh, that would be you, uh, Stephen. You did the Twitter mention. Okay, good. And I, I should hit the button and do that as well. Okay, and Thorn is here, I see. Okay, uh, the where I am now is in an area where they have a lot of, and I'll, I want to give you a, a quick view of that. They have a lot of uh, uh, small publishers and they have other uh they have independent uh uh authors who have self-published and um i am sitting here are you guys are you you guys there okay yeah i'm here alan i'm just there's somebody trying to come in as okay. we spoke i'm gonna bring them in i'm not sure where they're from it looks like he's a dentist somewhere okay. in the middle east and Thorne is there, too. Well, Thorne is here, but I don't see him on camera or trying to come in. I think he's just Hi. watching us. Okay. Hi. Hi. Can I? We are a rare book pro. Ah, Thorne. Let me bring Thorne in. Hold Thorne. on. Me. We are talking. Sir, I can't. Ab Abdel, we Hi, are Thorne. a rare okay. book program. That's what we talk about, rare books. Would you like to stay with us? Hello, I'm yeah, I like it. Okay, watch Hello, what we're Abdul. doing, and if you have questions, by all means, join in. And joining us right now is Thorne Donnelly from Liberty Books. Hi, Thorne. Hello, Hi, Thorne Donnelly. Hi, Thorne. Glad to see you. I, as, I, I, as I said earlier, I, can. I am in uh, St. Petersburg, Florida at the, um, at the Times uh, Reading Festival. It's put on by the St. Petersburg Times or the uh, Tampa Bay Times. And um, with me here is uh, Michael Slicker, who, uh, who has Lighthouse books. And I know you gentlemen know Michael. I'm going to turn the, the camera around here so that, uh, so that he can uh, hey, Mike. Uh, so you can see Hi. him. And I'm going to give yeah. him uh, this right here. If you just hold that, hold on. No, just hold on to that part right there. Okay. That's the microphone. Okay. Oh, you can. You just can. Just hold that. Okay. No, no, this part right here. Oh, forget, forget that. that. <laughs> that's uh, that's because I am something of a technological mogul. <laughs> And in fact, that's why Alan is holding the phone and not me. <laughs> yeah. so, yes, this is the Times Reading Festival. They had asked me to come and do some book evaluations, that sort of thing. Uh, the unfortunate part is that they neglected to tell the public that anybody was here <laughs> doing such things. So I yeah. haven't had to evaluate any books. Mm -hmm. But I've had a great day because um, in the past few days, I did a bunch of purchasing. So I've been able to go through my own, my very own books and take a look at them. <laughs> and, fact, and Michael was, uh, was down in uh, you, your neighborhood, you guys. Yeah. He, was, he was down in, uh, in, in your area. Uh, Palm Beach in that Palm area. Beach, yeah. 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 What'd you pick up, Mike? So it, let, me, let me share some of those things with you. I, I've just had a great time. It's been a genuine uh, rare book cafe because here I sit out in the sunshine and um, just looking at old books. Uh, 
system. And what I what I did particularly or was able to do because once again I'm a technological know nothing uh, and couldn't do any real work. What I could do is just look at the books over and over again. <laughs> the, Price and by instinct. This, this this is a book, an emblem book from the 1550s. Can you see the? Uh, can you see a little higher? The, a little higher. Hold it up a little higher. The other. There the, you go. Perfect. Okay, good. I think we've got it. A little bit up. A little bit up towards your chin, and what Mike. What is this? This is an emblem book from the 1550s, and I basically I wanted you to just look at how the the page is set up. Hold the book and higher. The rest, hold the book up higher. Hold it up and let me see if I can bring it closer to your chin. Uh, up, the, up, and then uh, up the other way. The page is going good? the wrong way. The other way. Okay. Oh, up, up. Now that move better? it to your left. To your oh, left. Yeah. Go up. More, 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 more. Raise the book up to your chin, and you're perfect. Good? Up, up towards your chin. And you see, that's sort of a, an like average that. page. Like that? Is that good? It's I'm trying to get page. it lined up so that they can they can see it. I'll tell you what, let me do this. I'm going to swap. Let me see if I can. Perfect. Swap perfect. Yes. How about that? That's better. Okay. Now I, I got wow. where I'm aiming here. Okay. And Mike, talk to you about this a little bit. Well, I, it, it's all I really was uh, interested in for the moment is just sort of looking at the way the book is designed. The remainder of the books that we got were mainly from... What do you estimate the value at? The 1890s. And I wanted to sort of contrast that. Say that again. I wanted to contrast the way the books were or compare the way the books were designed in the 1890s. So he's going to show you an 1890s book. Can you hear him? Guys? Yes. Can you hear Michael? Can you hear Michael? Yes, we can. And okay. And, and so here, here's okay, a book from the well-known Kelmscott Press. Wow. Uh, William Morris, uh, the Rossettis, uh, the Pre-Raphaelites, and they, you can see how they have uh, had a resurgence of that particular design. How the pages, the way the pages are done, is very similar wow. to that. You can see the, the uh, Kelmscott uh, logo there, yeah. right there, right? Yeah. Nice, nice, beautiful. Mm -hmm. you, know, and you see, they've 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 brought back the 1500s. All of a sudden, they really the have, haven't they? These are now these are contemporary, or these these are yeah, uh, these, recently produced books, right? Uh, well, 1890, 1890. But yeah. uh, but they brought back a, uh, a style that was uh, mm -hmm. was known, and that's what. What's the exact title and author of that book? Wow. Nice. Nice binding. Did you buy these from one estate or? Mike, I think you froze. Your camera is frozen. Yeah. Are they doing this on a cell phone? Steve? Yeah. Yeah. Bad idea. Yeah. Yeah, they're gone. Yeah. Wait a minute. Did you ever hear of those? Did anybody offer them to you prior and it walked out? No, nah, you never know. Books are like salmon cycles. I, it seems I, we're all swimming in a salmon cycle right now. We're all finding really good stuff. 
Remote. Alan, if you can hear me, you're streaming, but you're not coming in. Try a reboot. Just a minute, I'm writing a message. So you were while while we're waiting for that, you were in book school this week, and we were actually looking at uh, some Morris, uh, some Kelm Scott, the, the Chaucer actually, and uh, I looked at a lot of other things. I have some stuff to show you, but I'm not sure if we want to wait till everybody gets Looks back. Like Alan's back. Alan's back. You're back. The poems. There it is. Is that the Kelm Scott? The poems of Keats. They're fantastic books. They're uh, in good shape. It's nice. And it's very nice. But you're frozen again, unless you're absolutely poised. No, <clears throat> I think you're frozen again. I'm curious. What you, the poems of Keats. I'm very curious about this. Let's see what we got here. Because if he's got a Kelm Scott, a more. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Poems of Keats. Let's see here. It's, I don't know if it's in here. Uh, John Keats, John Keats, Life Letters. I think you're better looking at a council president. William no, I, I always have Bradley's or Ahern's near it, just yeah. in case. It's just a quick read. Um, I don't imagine Ahern's has private press in it is what I mean. Oh, getting. no, absolutely. With somebody like Keats, you could find a Kelmscott or something else um, if they picked it up. I'm, a lot of times you'll look with a Keats. I would definitely, instead of trying to add, you know, do an add all or something on it now, I'd run through Ahern's. Um, they definitely have Keats. And, and if Keats did a major work and it was then done by the Kelmscott, it would be listed as a subtitle in the main listing. But the book Poems by Keats is not listed at all. So there's nothing to go by. Um, beautiful binding, though. Nice line. So what were you doing in book school? Well... Um, one of the things we spent a couple of days looking at was private press. And this is uh, one of the textbooks, fairly common. It's called, it's by R Roderick Cave, and it is a, uh, a private press book. And uh, I don't know if uh, that we, there was a lot of discussion about Keats, but I thought I would read you something, which you might be fun about. Uh, can you hear me quite well? Yes, you're fine. As an example of a luxurious book at its most magnificent, at its furthest removed from commercial printing, the Overbrook Press, Menon Lescant, is unequaled among modern private press books and has few peers among the books of earlier presses. Did you understand what I said? Of course you did. <laughs> All right, Alan's back. Hold on. Mike, we're back. You're frozen again. As soon as you come back in, you freeze. Hold on a second, Thorne. Yeah. Yeah, this is, uh, this is not a good system. Yeah, I'm with you. Wait a minute. I'm sending him a note. He comes in live, then... You can see the notes. You can see. Of course you can, yeah. Yeah, I can see your notes. Well, this is one of the technical difficulties we've got to work out in the system. I know next week we're going to be doing the radio program from the Leabda Book Fair, Long Island Antiquarian Book Fair, and they're going to try and get on um, afterwards on Rare Book Cafe. Well, the, your radio program, Steve, does that not come in on a, a cell phone, which is much easier? This the video seems to be what's giving us the problem. Well, that's the problem. You've got yeah, you do. It's audio only, and we're on a Skype line, which you know is a, a proven system. Um, this with Wi-Fi. See, one of the things that my my program director is the absolute guru of radio and all yeah, this backstage he stuff. He said you always have to do this kind of program on a hard wire. Even if the Wi-Fi is good, it's moments like this, you know, I, I think, that, you know me, I'm, I like Mike, I'm, I'm ignorant computer-wise, but I'm learning more. I totally agree with him because uh, anything, we'll, uh, 
Uh, yeah, well, audio does not going require going that much. What's called bandwidth. Uh -huh. Alan, you're back. Factor of ten. Okay. All right. There, oh, I hear you. Hold on. Okay. So let me give them that note again. I don't think we even have an audience today. Dude. No, I think we do. I think we do. Tom Reed is here. A couple of other people are here. But um, no, we had a re we did a rerun today. My program director is shooting a mezcal tequila commercial, so we had to go rerun. Um, same thing. You come in and go right to freeze. Uh, all right, let's wait. Okay, pick up where you left off again. I'm sorry, Thorne. Well, I was just reading you from a very famous reference novel, the reference to a very famous book that they described as one of the most beautiful books going. Now, why would I do that to you? <laughs> I'm not sure. Because here it is. I don't know. Well, well. It, is, uh, it is in French. It is regarded, uh, I got this from Australia. But I will, I'm just going to go grab a page for you. Deckled edges and all that. But the, the illustrations are all somewhat like so. Well, yeah. Thorne, I admit, I wasn't paying attention. I, I was trying to send, what title is that? That's a gorgeous book. It is called The History de la Maison, Maison Le Scott. It's by Abbe Prevost. It's okay, yes. More importantly, yes. It's printed by a private press called the Overstreet Press in 1958 and is generally regarded as one of the most beautiful books done. Uh, it's funny, when I was up in, in New York, uh, Kelmscott, William Morris, was. there's a lot of people that really said he was, a lot of people that aren't as thrilled with him. I mean, the Kelmscott Chaucer is very expensive. A lot of people, after he finished up, died, uh, that press folded they thought he was perhaps uh, going back to the to two and ornate type, different types. There's what's called older and modern types and such. And a lot of the people actually work for him went on. I looked at some books. Uh, oh, my God. Let me just. Uh, Omar, I am going to bring you in. Realize that we talk about rare books. Yeah. Go ahead, Thorne. Okay. So, so it's interesting that while the Cal Scott. You looked at we're becoming very popular in the Middle East, it looks like. Guys, nice hookah. You got any rare books to go with it? Bye-bye. Okay. okay, next. Okay. Uh, another one I picked up is a book called uh, Undine. Undine. It's, I, it's a limited production. Uh, Who's the press? I know the book. Fuck you, De La Mat. Undine. Yep. The press, it's a signed limited edition uh, signed by Rackburn. It was hit and illustrated by Rackburn. And let me, let me, let me just, let, let me get to it here. And I will be there for a second. Uh, this one my, 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 my. It's a double day page. It covers William Hyman in 1919. And the interesting part about this one, I believe, if I remember it correctly, maybe, no, I don't think this is signed by, by uh, it's the one that's illustrated by him, by Rackham, Arthur Rackham. And this is uh, basically, it's just a very nice, nice copy of it with a lot of some very nice, uh, Nice, nice, uh, nice, nice illustration. I happen to love his illustrations. Oh, rack them for sure. Yeah. yeah, so that's nice. Is that the limited edition of Undine? Uh, I don't believe so. I believe it's just a it's a, it's a double day trade edition from nineteen. Is, is is the top edge of the book gilt? Yes, it is. I think you got it first, unless it was gilted in the binding process. Back then, one of the ways of telling, like in the Scribner's Children series, uh -huh. which I think that would be part of, you know, with the Rackham illustrations, 
um, the way that you identified that book was the um, top edge of the book was guilt. So if you have any of those Scribner books from the 1920s, 1920s. This is the British edition. Printed in okay. British, written by Clay. And the binding, the binding was from Doubleday or the binding was added on? I'm believing that this is a a stock. Yeah, this is New York Doubleday, 1919. Doubleday Page and Company. It's London Heinemann. I have right. To a little more I, uh, printed in Great Britain. With the top edge gilt, it tells me, at least unless there's something different, you should have the first edition of that. That would work. And then here we have... Uh, is there, this is not, this is signed by Frank Reynolds. It's in vellum. The Pickwick pages from the Pickwick papers. Nice. With his Very nice. Ribbons, like in the ribbons. So what I nice. what I'm doing here is I'm adding uh, some of my Christmas inventory. This is a this again is a quite nice one. Uh, lovely illustrations, I believe. Yeah, this is this is uh, 350 copies. On number twenty nine, signed by the illustrator Frank Reynolds. Nice, and nice, nice. Vellum, which is which is nice. Did you do any pricing on that? Um, uh, I think pick what I think we're looking at seven fifty five and seven fifty, something like that. For nice. You. I I hope you sell them before the show, but if you don't, you're gonna have a beautiful booth this year. I'm gonna. I'm planning on having a beautiful booth, and I'm planning on jacking the. You know, I think I those might be a little low. I don't know yet. This is interesting. It's a book from the Royal Club in New York, one of our many publications. It's about, uh, we, we spent a day talking about publishers' bindings. And this is uh, the work of Alice C. Morris. They had an exhibit on publishers' bindings. We spent a day. Uh, this is written by a lady who's the librarian at uh, the New York City Public Library. Her name is uh, Mind uh, Mindy, but Mindell... Lubansky. And so we went and spent the afternoon at the New York Public Library looking at about uh, 100 or 200 bindings of the publisher's binding era, uh, which as you, you know, know is a late, a late 1900s. And some of them were, you know, elaborate guilt. Some of these, you know, they, they were signed by the artists and all that. They're not all just trash. And so it was kind of interesting. We also had to look at some dust jackets and things there too. So I, I got her, this is her book published by the Grolier Club. She's the head librarian there, so I got her to sign it for me, that's all. But it was fun to spend the time. You know, the, what, what I get to do when I'm with these guys, I get to go in the back rooms of the Harvard, of the New York Public Library. You know, the, all the people in the lines and the shit with the kitty cats. Man, I walk right by, the librarian meets at the door, we go in the side door, down the elevator, and there you go. It's fun. And they had it all laid out, including champagne and wine for the class. Not too shabby. No, not at all. Not at all. I think I was watching the movie last night, The Librarians. <laughs> is such a thing? Yeah, there's a thing called The Librarian. Um, you've got if you haven't seen it, you'd really enjoy it. No. The first one, it, the guy goes to work for the New York Public Library, but underneath the New York Public Library, all the books come to life. All the ancient artifacts are real. They have an episode about the Spear of Destiny. It's a two and a half hour movie. Noah Wiley is the star, oh, no. and there's three other notable names in each. You know, in each one. The other one they go after King Solomon's mines for a change, and the third one they do something with Dracula. But it's all based on the library and rare books, and that underneath the New York Public Library, it's it all comes to life like the museum. And it's called The Librarian. Is this a TV show or a, a, a made-for-the-cinema movie? Both. It's a movie that was in the cinema. It's a movie that's on television. Uh, you can get it. If you have TNT on your back channels, um, you can get it now in the old, you know, the old rerun movie section. And it's also a television series now. I want to show you something else that's not in the $500 to $1,000 or more range. Uh, while I was gone, Michelle, who you know, uh, gets a phone call from the library over here. And somebody called them and said, look, real estate guy, I'm closing. we got a place here. Uh, we're going to throw the books out. Come get them. Wow. So, you know, they, the family took some of them. I'm now, you can't see it. I'm not going to bother picking it up. You're just going to have to trust me. I've got five boxes of books out here. Some of them are, uh, 
Interesting. A lot of you know, we've got the, we got a table here. I can place that the Patrick O'Brien paper bags. No, nothing. But there's also some pretty inter interesting ones I haven't got to, but I thought this is a funny story. The book is uh, between fifty and hundred dollars, but considering the fact I paid two guys fifty dollars to move the book, so far I guess I got a push here. I used to live in Aspen, as you remember, and this. Me too. I always liked trains, and I used to love. I still think to this day, one of the prettiest places I've ever been in my 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 life is the Aspen Valley. It's called the Roaring Fork Valley, Roaring Fork River, and uh, where the I caught and became a world record holder for. Uh, for fishing, fly fishing, is a place called the Crystal River. The river intersects the Roaring Fork and goes down to the Colorado River. First book I pull out of the box is signed by the author, uh, two authors, and, uh, and, and an association copy of somebody else, the Crystal River Pictorial, where I used to live. Wow. And it's about the old, it's a 19, it's about 1970, so they're online, 50 to 150 bucks. And yeah. Yeah. It's about all the old, it's the old railroad train. I mean, this is really where I used to live. You know, uh, it's the Rocky Mountains and all that, you know. So right. I'm not for sure this one's for sale. This might be going home. Thorne, turn, turn your volume, volume down, down a little, little bit. bit. I can hear you echoing. Okay. Turn your volume down. down. How about there? Okay. Is that better? Yeah, because I don't hear me. In your, I hear me through you. Oh. Now that you turn it down, it's a little less. Okay. Yeah, the technology with these guys, they've got to gear it up or this thing's going to fold, I think. No, I don't. I got to tell you, I love the idea of the app. You know me. I'm the dinosaur of the group. I mean, uh, but I see phenomenal things on it. And it's only four months old. Yeah, no, so sorry, I, I think I, I, that I, I, is a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I'm sure this problem is something they will overcome in the next couple of weeks, months. Um, oh, yeah. You know. And it also depends on the equipment that the user has. I don't know what I don't know if there would be. I don't know what he's using. Probably just the cell phone. Is there? I, would you, I, I would, what Alan's using? Yeah. I would be happy if we can get their tech support to send us a letter, or if there's on there. You know, I've looked. I don't see an information page to get a small headset and and uh, microphone, which I can plug into my. You know, I have state of our equipment. Uh, well, this, I mean, if you have this from your phone, that works. You can use your headset microphone from the phone if the jack is the same size. What I'm doing is the headset because it's just easier for me. You know, the earbuds don't fall out. If you're going to do something like that for this, get a good headset. Yeah. You know, I'll see what I've, I, I might have something at home. Yeah, and, and the funniest thing is that I don't understand about this, but on the radio program, I use this wireless headset with a chip, a Logi chip that goes into the computer. Yeah. If I if I do this program, I have to take the Logi chip out, sh you know, shut down and start up properly and all that, and then use the corded headset. I'm sure down the road all this will work out. You know, this is too good a venue. Yeah, it's funny. I'm just I'm just looking into my boxes while we're talking. Uh, this is a book, Pioneers in Paradise. It's an autograph copy. She said we had some good stuff in here. Uh, and it's a book that I've been sold out of. Huh. And Pioneers in Paradise is about West Palm Beach, the first hundred years. Um, is there a yellow sticker on that book like somebody was trying to sell it somewhere? Autograph copy. Oh, okay. Yeah, I saw the sticker. I don't know if it was a garage sale sticker or a bookstore sticker. And then there's some things we probably don't. This this is kind of funny. This is old home week for me. Uh, I don't know what to do with this. To be honest with you, I, I'm I'll just. You. I have not even looked at these boxes. One Nation, uh, America remembers 9/11. Yeah, uh, that looks like. Oh, I know. That looks like a Time Life or something series. It, it is. I, did you know I was there for 9/11? No. No. I actually watched the, you know, I was there for it. So uh, I don't know what this, you know, looks, looks like we got some, oh, art, art pack. These are fun. Look. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pop-ups and stuff. Yeah, I've seen those. Nice. You know, I have got to put an ad in the paper, cash paid for books, and start getting more aggressive about buying. I'm getting spoiled with the appraisal work, you know. 
Well, you know, a lot of this stuff, though, I, I have now. I, oh, my God. Here's one. I swear to God, I'm not saying. I believe you. <laughs> what? Next one. Masters and Johnson. Human sexual response. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What edition? Uh, I'm looking. No dust jacket. I don't think it was issued with one. I'm that not sure. Up. First. Wow. That's got some value. And uh, I'll give it 35%, 65%. The 35 that the book doesn't require a dust jacket. Or else the dust jacket is beige and has brown letters on it. One of the two. I would say it's a 1966. I suspect it has a dust jacket, but I think. Um, it, well, yeah, I know you would. No, no, I'm with you. I, I just have a feeling. I, I'm not sure. It rang a bell. There's the problem with an old photographic memory. My film gets blurry. Yeah. Well, a lot. You know, a lot of this is probably going to be uh, garbage. Memories of a fox hunting man. Um, oh. Well, who? Yeah. 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 Yeah, uh, uh, this looks nice, like nice garbage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's garbage. Uh, no, I said nice garbage. I mean, she found them and you know, they were throwing them out. Yeah, nice. yeah, you know, it's funny. This is about Thomas Jefferson, who I happen to like. It's a it's price clip, dust jacket, but you know what? Why not? I'll flip through it someday, of course. Yeah, so I don't know what I got in here. I'm not gonna bore us, but. I've, I'm willing to bet, since for the first two books I pulled out, I've already tripled my $50. I think I did okay. Well, definitely. Definitely. And I'm not, I don't know. I might I might give you as a holiday present the Masters and Johnson and keep the railroad book for myself. We already, we're already ahead of the game for the, all I got to sell something for 50 and I'm going to profit here. You know what? I think I've been lying to you. I think she said we had two guys for fifty bucks a piece, so I got to get a hundred dollars out of eight boxes here. Can I do this? Oh, I don't think you have any problems with that. You still got three on. Uh, looks like you still have three unexplored boxes. Oh, I, I just pulled the first five out of this one box. I looked at this other one. It's got the. It's got a bunch of paperbacks. Patrick O'Brien. She told me about it. It's a complete set of what's Patrick O'Brien? It's the. It's the. the what are these guys? There. Uh, it's the sailing books, right? Um, yeah, a novelist, um, usually with a nautical theme, if yeah, I got yeah, it there's, right. There's, yeah. a, there's, a, there's a set of about tw 12 of them. It's H.M. No. Prize. It's a, they're sailboat books. I know what they're about. My problem is I just don't read fiction. Well, <laughs> I'm not a better fiction one. Hey, I gotta, I'm, I'm having fun doing this. Package deal. I swear to God, I'm not setting this up. I set up the, the expensive books to show you, okay? But we're talking about Patrick O'Brien. I just grabbed the next book out of that box. Okay, package deal. Biography of Patrick O'Brien. Four twenty. Well, what you what you really want to find is the fir his first book. Her for his first book. Her yeah, first that's book. A, that, that's nice a good book. one. Hey, don't give me a hard time. At least it's the first. Nice. And what what was this? These were just sitting in a box on the street, being dumped by the library. No, no, the library. It's calls. And I made. I'm trying to expand my reach with. I'm being much better with emails to lot to book people I meet. Uh, you know who the lady who, who owns who runs American Book Prices Current? No. Uh, no. Low, but she's quite famous. Uh, she came to get. She gave a talk one night at the at the Grolier Club, uh, and then oh, uh, you know what Grolier, who Grolier was, right? Grolier. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Uh, how about three bindings? Uh, actually, looking at them in the club. But we yeah. are. We'd love to get her on one of the shows. Yeah. And I, you know, I'm talking to Bruce McKinney from the Rare Book Hub, um, but from America, I'd love to get her contact numbers and yeah. stuff. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see if I can get show. her. She, she gives a good speech. She's uh, Her husband's not feeling well, so I don't know. She did this because he booked it a year before. But, uh, you know, so so it's it just, but anyway, so the library, I, I, they're, they're across the street from me, and I've I've donated some time and, and not and money. I, I have, they had a thing about, I think I told you a couple of years ago about the, the, the burning of books, the books that Hitler burned before then the crystal knock. I think it's called. Yeah. Crystal knock. Yeah. And uh, so the library uh, had for, I believe two months on one about maybe 500 square foot expedition. They included, you know, they, they had a very large, it was one of their library displays for the year. 
uh, I helped uh, judge some essays written by high school students. And so I got to know the library people. And then uh, they had people, it's very interesting. Uh, they had illustrations or copies of many of the books that, that, that they were burned by the Nazis. But more importantly for, this was a, they have a good outreach education program there. They actually had a couple Holocaust survivors that mm -hmm. came in complete with a tattoo, the whole nine yards, you know the story. Um, they came in to speak about what it was like because they were there the night mm -hmm. that it was burned and they were, you know, so there was, it was not just a bunch of books on the wall. It was, it was a very well done production. It was interesting though, some of the books that were burned were, uh, and I, I've got a list around here and I just don't remember them. I get burned books confused with banned books because last week they had the banned book thing. <laughs> just about every book you got in your, your bookstore, right? My classic book section, I went through it one day and you know, it's Steinbeck and all this kind of stuff that were banned, you know, a Lady Chatterley's Lover and you know, all that kind of stuff. I mean, I got much better porn on, on, on Comcast, you know? But the one I found was interesting that got banned was um, the one uh, that was written by, uh, let's call it, I forget his name, I'm sorry, uh, All Quiet on the Western Front, which was written. Mark. Yeah. Mark. You, you know the story, he was a World War I soldier, and that was probably the one of the first anti-war novels ever written. He published it about 29 or something, Hitler's coming to power, they're trying to build the Wehrmacht up to what, they, you know, what happened in World War II and all that. And this is, and if you read that book, you ain't joining the army, baby. You know, it's a vi vivid descriptions of, of, of life on the, the the Western Front in World War II, or World War One, and they're gearing up for World War II. So, you know, it's interesting was... if you know the history. I knew that book. I'd actually sold a first edition of that book for several hundred dollars. I don't really remember at this point. I'm just kind of... Yeah, it would be with a dust jacket, yeah. sure. I, did not re I honestly did not know... Uh, you know, that was one of the days when I wasn't researching books well. I would do it. I'd price it, sell it, and gone. And I did not know it was a book about World War One. I. I did not know it was burned by the Nazis. I mean, all this stuff is... Uh, so, like, that's one of the things about going to Rare Book School. I'm a little tired. I got... My flight was a little late last night. But, uh, you know, just the, the, the side talks you hear the, to understand what's really going on, uh, comparing, like, the Kem Scott uh, Morris's books with uh you know who the uh the illustrator gill is or gill is pronounce the name again g-i-l-l -L. let me uh, first name david gill i think apparently. oh gill yeah eric gill eric gill so we had one of his books next to the Kelmscott. you know the Kelmscott. frankly i like gill's work better the typography that said uh, you know it, it, it's, it's all over the place but you know we're looking at things like that yeah, it's a that's a matter of individual taste. I mean, you know, William Morris. If you look at his, you know, like the wallpaper books, or you know, some of his other things with borders and things, I think they're absolutely gorgeous. Um, other people would like Gill. Other people would like Gowdy. You know, all the oh, other oh, you know, names. Course. It's just it's it's just kind of fun. Uh, they're just gorgeous. I mean, you know, the fine press. That's one of the things that I really, when I talk about rare books on the radio program, or if I'm doing a seminar, one of the ones that I do, and it's kind of supportive of what you are saying, um, is that the fine presses are the best conversations. Because in a fine press book, you have every element of the book that you're talking about, and it's done by the Picassos of their trade. I think you're about to go get a fine press book. No, no, I'm about to go be get a book that cost me a dollar ninety five because I know that because I got a nickel and change back. You probably might have seen one of these once. Oh, yeah. Comp OK, but is that what it is or is it a book inside? No, it is my composition book filled with pages of notes for the class. Yeah, yeah. OK, I just sure. thought if I, you know. I'm not going to, I've got things highlighted and, you know, I, I don't know. I, what I was really going to do was hoping to look through this and um, come back and, and next week show or maybe Wednesday's show. I, I'm going to, Wednesday's also going to be trouble for me. I'm going up to Orlando, but, um, but I was going to hopefully to give you an outline of, 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 of more of the people. Uh, it was interesting. You know, we started talking about the, uh, the uh, the issue of, uh, of of handmade paper 
but we, the, it started in the 1800s. And you, do you know what the, what the, the, what the, the handmade paper was made out of? I'm just trying to educate the artist. It was made out of flax. Yeah, yeah. yeah. made out of flax. So I always thought it was made out of cotton. But flax is what was actually linen. And uh, there was, it was an interesting story he was telling. Uh, right around 1800, and you, I'd like to know your opinion on this. Right around 1800, they started running out of flax, which is basically used underwear. And what the rag guys would do is, you know, you'd throw out your underwear and it was nice because after you wore it for a couple of weeks, you know, it got nice and smelly. But the point, the point is it got beat up and then you could make it into, do you know what the ingredient in the big pot where you stir it together with water and then you make handmade paper is truly correctly called? No, but I have a feeling it has a really gross name. <laughs> no, it's the other way. The actual technical thing from the books and the literature is it is called stuff. Stuff. No. So when you and I use the term, oh, I got some stuff here, we're actually incorrect. The real technical name for this for the flax liquid with the clay and everything all mushed together. Anyway, so he's telling this story. They start running out of flax, uh, because out of linen. And because there were some issues. Uh, that they were trying to encourage the, the British wool trade. So they were having people wear woolen underwear and more woolen shirts. So there was a great thing that happened around 1800. And what it was, was the discovery, the chemical chlorine, which now meant that they could go and take all other rags that were colored rags, dye them, and make stuff. Uh, so I love that. Uh, this is my little story here. And then it would be bleached out white. And then that, that stopped the shortage of, 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 of handmade paper. Because if you remember, the 1800s, 1820s was still the letterpress. The mach- you know, it was before the steam. So the, even then, the literacy rate was growing so large that they were running out of paper. Now, here's the cravat that nobody knows the answer to. And I wanted your question. Concurrent with... Around 1800, and these are all rough dates, A, because I'm tired, and B, because nobody really knows. They started seeing more books being sold. We see now more books from after chlorine date that have foxing on them. And there is a, there's a question of did the chlorine chemical, when it was added to these early papers, because you see these two things, they may be linked, they may not be. There's there's like two sides of schools on that. I wonder what your opinion was. Okay, and I'll tell you my opinion, not just from from being a rare bookie, but maybe you do or, know, do or don't know this about me. In Dade County, they used to offer a satisfactory, advanced, and superior rating from the Dade County Health Department for swimming pool operators. Remember, when I first came to the beach, rare books was a back hobby. And I was running swimming pools and being a social director. So I went to school for two years. I got two out of the three certificates because the third year they didn't give it anymore. I know a lot about chlorine, sodium hypochlorite. 3% is bleach, 5% goes in your swimming pool. And it's an extremely, as we all know, corrosive and deadly chemical. So since there's a, a, a theoretical debate about it, knowing what I know about chlorine, knowing what I know about books, I would tend to be of the school of thought that said chlorine could be the precursor to foxing based on the fact that it wasn't there before foxing, you know, et cetera. I mean, knowing the chemical composition of chlorine, I would think that is yes. From chlorine, let me take a segue here. Um, As everybody knows that's listening, um, Edie has a segment on the program called the miniature book corner and while you're tired and i'm nursing a cold she's just getting towards over one but anxiously wants to come on and show some things that we were talking about today so ladies and gentlemen thorn i am giving the microphone to my wife edie and it's time for edie's miniature book corner and by the way i quit smoking i'm not going to have a cigarette i hope this lasts me too Oops, be careful. I'm telling you slowly.
Hi, Thorne. How are you? I am so good, and I have a surprise for you. But, oh, what do you have? Okay, what I have is I'm going to need your email, and please we'll do this off the air. I was at the Rare Book School for, um, I was at the Grolier Club in New York for a Rare Book School class in New York, and you know, I got back last night. And they have one of the finest uh, libraries in the world, and they have, we were just talking about all the very expensive books and things they have there. In the, one of the rooms there, and I took five pictures for you, they have a probably four foot hall, high uh, chest with drawers that are about this big that slide out. Yes. I believe there's five or six drawers plus a glass top. In this, I only got about three pictures for you. And when you slide a drawer out, in each drawer are little compartments of which are, is filled with fine bindings, miniature book this man collected or commit oh, wow. or whatever. So what I did, because it was just during a part of a lecture, I couldn't really interrupt. I've got about three pictures for you. So if you have at some point in the next week, uh, I've got them, you know, I just email, I, I took them for you. I couldn't get them real close. It's just a general effect uh, of what this may, he donated it to the grower. They have a lot of donations there. And it's a filing, it's a lovely wooden filing cabinet in the corner. Oh, I'd love to with see it. Probably uh, 500. Uh, they're not your general rare book. I know that a lot of them are a little bigger than yours because he, his other interest was fine bindings and he commissioned. So apparently, a number of these are like you'll have the same text block in them but five yes. different bindings of the same book by different fine binders. It's not so much the, the textbook that counts their artworks, but I, 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 I took pictures for you. I'll get them to you, but I don't want to, I don't want your email on the air. Cause you know, people might. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. This, I don't know if you can see it is a miniature book. You're, you need to bring it up. I'm not, I'm, there you okay. go. There you go. Yeah. You're dead center. Whatever you are. Perfect. Okay. It's blue with the red trim. Yes. And it's blank inside. That's so good. But in the yes. But in the back, I don't know if you can see, I see it. Something, yeah, yeah. Okay. Is the name of the person that made it. And it says Capella Book Arts. So I Googled Capella Book Arts before. Yeah. And I spoke to Linda. Linda Capella, who made these for fun. Ah. Now, she lives in Fort Pierce and up north. Okay. She's not doing it anymore. I don't know where I got it, but she said that she still has about 10 of them in Fort Pierce, where she spends part of her time with her husband. So she is going to let me know what a package deal would be for them. She said originally they were about $25 and she belonged to several of the book societies. Yeah, She's cool. been to St. Pete. So it's possible. We don't know. But in the meantime, she has my email address. I have hers, but she's not in business anymore. Oh, okay. Well, that's so great. somewhere. She said today she would be selling them for about $50. When she originally made them, she let people have a pin on them so that they could wear a little book. Oh, sweet. And yes. Are they all blank? I don't know. But I just spoke to her. This is a real miniature book. And I would say anybody that's a book dealer should go around with a ruler. Yes, of course. This is a little metal case. Yeah. And the front of the case, can you see it, is a magnifying glass. Ah, useful. Inside of this necklace okay. is a Webster's Dictionary. Oh, my God. Beautiful. And it's an English dictionary that if people wanted to know what a word was or yeah. look something up, they could look it up. 
this metal case is really in lousy condition. But I got it because I wanted it. Let me see the case when you're done. Here. Now, something else that I collected before I really knew what miniature books were, were the little golden books. Oh, yes, of course. Now, this is a little, little golden book. And it's about the saggy, baggy elephant number four. So I looked this up right before the show. This one is only worth a couple of bucks. But the ones that were done in the 50s are listed at two, three hundred dollars. So although it's not a real miniature book, <coughs> it is a little book. They're all made the same way with this golden black spine. Are they done by the same publishing company that does the golden books? It's they're all called little golden books. Little little golden books. So they're probably they're probably done by the, the publishing company. So let's get some. What? What else do you have there? What else do you have for us today? And the other thing that I have, the last thing I have, is when I was a kid and I would go to a penny arcade, uh -huh. you could put a penny into a machine and crank a handle and see a flip movie. Of course. This is a Walt Disney flip book. <coughs> On one side, it's Mickey Mouse. Oh, okay. And on the other side, it's Donald Duck. And inside, you can flip it and you can see the movie. <laughs> it is, <coughs> excuse me, it's larger, about two and a half. It's the, set, the right width of a miniature book, about two and a the half oblong. times wide, the oblong. the oblong. But... I got it because I liked it, and it was Disney, and it was a flip book. Oh, it's absolutely lovely. And, and that that's what I have. Well, that, but as, as Steve said, I am fighting a cold. Oh, well, go get some, go have some tea and pour, pour some whiskey in and go to bed. That's exactly what I'm going to do. So, but I hear that you were at a show. And you did well. You enjoyed yourself. No, I didn't go to a show. I went. To, I was five days in a seminar put on by the University of Virginia Rare Book School. But I was at the Grolier Club in New York. What was the topic? Uh, it was the book from eighteen hundred on. Oh wow! So it, it was uh, taught by the the head of the Grolier Club, and it was a an overview a overview course on the uh, on books in general. And it was uh, it was really quite sweet. How many were in attendance, Zorn? Uh They limit their classes to 12. Oh, wow. They have a wait list of 13, so the 25 people applied, and uh, I was very lucky to be one of them. There was three me three members of the club itself were applied because we were hosting it, and nine others. Uh, the, actually, there was two courses at the Rare Book School up there. One was at the New York Public Library that week, and then one was at the Grow Your Club. They their their usual courses are at the University of Virginia in Charlottesville, but they do they do one every year at the Morgan in New York, one at the Folger Library in Washington, and this they haven't done one at the Grow Your Club in about ten years, and they've never done one at the uh, New York Public Library. So wow. it's in the back, you know. This is all uh, it's it's all. So you came away with a lot of knowledge and twelve new friends. Uh yes, a lot of knowledge, a lot of uh, new friends, a lot of good ideas, and. Uh, and I wore long pants for a week in my little Willie hat, and it damn near killed me. I'm wearing shorts. I went to, I went to beach yoga this morning. Watch the sun come up and work on my tan, baby. Oh, we, we get spoiled down here. We sure do. Okay, I'm going to give the back to Steve. Good to be seen as usual. And Steve will send you my email. Yeah, I need it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Where's your cane? What? <coughs> Send him my email address. Yeah, I'm all waiting. <coughs> and, whoops, hold on a second here. 
And we're back. Hi. What are you having? Looks like you're munching. I'll talk. You munch. Uh, I was just. I uh, haven't had lunch. I had a uh, a guy that came in and wanted to sell me a bunch of uh, German language books. Eh, it depends uh, on what the pictures are. The pictures are in English. Well, that looks like a, a standard trade binding yeah. of what the eighteen eighties, nineteen hundreds. That's about what it is. Yeah. Uh, this one looks a little more interesting. The pictures are always in English, though. Yeah. This one is actually not the one I wanted to show you. Uh, let me just take a quick look and see what this one is, because it has, it looks to have, yeah, it has a real binding on it, one, two. Yeah. Looking, but this one I looked up online. It is by, it's actually French. The others were German. This one's French by Daudet. Uh, Numa Rum Safan or something. And there are color plates in that? Oh, uh, color plates. That's what I'm looking for. This one, not. Is there a, is there a limitation statement of some kind? Yeah, it's 1881. It's a car either in the check. front or the back. What? Either in the front or the back. Is there some kind of limitation statement? You know, uh, choice numeros, example, exemplars. You know, whatever yeah, it would no, be. Yeah, none of these are limited limited editions. No, a lot of times. A lot of times, some of those, um, I guess, 1890s, but early 1900s, especially French little uh, wrappers, you know, paperback style yeah. uh, books have beautiful pushwa hand colored illustrations in them. And in addition to that, there's usually some kind of colophon statement that says, you know, limited to, yeah. you know, maybe a deluxe limited and so on. But some of them are really collectible um, and sure. bring in some value. Uh, first German edition of the five volume set of jo uh, of uh, Bernard Shaw. That's a nice novelty item. Yeah, yeah, you know it's it's done by it's. Uh, I was able to find that. I was using one of my reference books. My uh, what are they here? They're uh, Dan Lawrence, the two volume set on Shaw. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And that covers all editions, all languages. I'm sure what that bibliography covers German editions. Well, yeah, I just found it. Yeah, it's a good. No, no, I was asking, yeah. yeah, first German edition. We're Thorne, we're getting close to 3:30. Yeah, so okay. let me let me say one thing kind of tongue in cheek. This is I was going through some of my stuff because we want to start making space back there. This is going to go into the car. My next language, I want to learn Swahili. <laughs> Well, that's all right. This one, this one will never come out of the house and will be with me as long as I live. A dictionary. Oh, Latin for dummies. Thanks. A dictionary of Japanese artists and their signatures. If anybody ever needs the information, send me the picture and I'll try and try and translate it. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, it has been a pleasure being with you here today. Being here today with you. Um, Edie, thank you for your contribution to the rare book section. And that's kind of all the time we have for today. Join us again on Wednesday at 3.30 right here at blab.im for the next episode of the Rare Book Cafe. And next Saturday, we go back to live status on Bucks on the Bookshelf on WDBFradio.com. That's DBF, David Barry Frank, WDBFradio.com, Bucks on the Bookshelf. And we will be live via remote with Lee Tamaris at the Long Island Antiquarian Book Fair. And I am an alumni of that association, so it's going to kind of be like very old home week because that was back in the 60s and 70s. Oh, my. So how fun will that be? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, we want to thank you for joining us today. The Rare Book Cafe is brought to you by the Florida Antiquarian Book Fair, celebrating 35 years in March. The Florida Antiquarian Book Fair features more than 100 dealers from around the country and the world. And for book lovers, it's paradise. We will see you guys next week. And Thorne, have a good one. Mike Allen, if you're out there at the St. Petersburg Times Book Fair, I hope you're having fun, and thanks for joining us. Bye-bye, everybody. Ciao, Thorne.
give 